here is another viewer requested video they wanted to know a little more about a post and peer building foundation so this is a foundation that would not have a continuous footing going around the perimeter of the house or even a continuous footer running the length of the house so instead we're going to use piers and a pier is just simply a concrete footing that the joist and the beams will be sitting on top of so here we have the beams that are sitting on top of the piers and of course i will not be able to provide you with any lumber sizes or concrete footing sizes try to find a structural engineer in your area for those and if you notice this is a foundation for an a-frame house and will be in the a-frame playlist so if you're looking for more information about building an a-frame type house make sure you check out our playlist so here is a pier otherwise known as a concrete footing with a post base connector that will be connecting the beam to the foundation and i'm not a big fan of using the concrete piers that you might use for a deck that can be purchased at most home improvement centers or lumber yards however i have seen them used more than once for single story house construction so the beams will basically transfer the load from the floor joist to each one of the footings so the load for this area here will be transferred to this footing and this footing and then the load from this area here transferred to this footing and this footing and so on and then above that we will have the floor joist the floor joist will transfer the loads from above them to the beams and then to the concrete footings and this type of construction isn't really popular where i live in southern california and i would imagine that would have something to do with earthquakes however you could probably build a shed or possibly an adu with them or at the very least ask your structural engineer if that might be possible and i realize something like this looks like it could save you a lot of money but you would actually need to do the math you would need to estimate the materials and the labor to find out whether or not you'd be better off using footings that would go around the perimeter or even a solid concrete foundation this is the second video in our series on um, basically i'm going to be breaking down a project on how to build the foundation and frame all the walls frame the roof and stuff for a two-story open floor plan i will put a link here you can visit if you haven't seen the first video and then of course i will put links at the end of the video to the next one when it is made and eventually you'll be able to go into the video description box for the for the video on YouTube and click on a link that will take you to an organized list of all the videos in order when they are completed so let's go ahead and get started here's our foundation already built with anchor bolts you can see the garage here with the stem walls around it and then this of course is the living area just going to kind of quick uh, go around here there are the anchor bolts sticking up and they're all placed where they need to be here they are placed together because there is going to be a break in the framing plates and uh, most building um, codes or most building departments require that so whenever you see them grouped together there's usually a, a reason why and that's probably the that there is a break remember the anchor bolts are usually going to be six foot on center that's a standard within 12 inches of each break and that would include the brakes that are right here now let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like after the footings have been dug and there the dirt for the footings has been removed and I believe the footings are about 15 inches wide they might be about uh, 18 inches deep I'm not sure you can actually see that the garage um, area here is a little lower than this area you'll get a better view of that here in a second and of course for those you wondering what in the heck this is if you look at the first video that I made or um, or follow some of the other ones you'll notice that there's a stairwell here and the joists go all the way across from these ends but they actually stop over here so it needs a load bearing footing a nice view of it there from the top and you can see here where it's a little lower than the area above here 
Now let's go ahead and form this baby up. So uh, again, this would be nice if we could work this fast, but uh, so be it. We uh, could just going to take a little longer for doing this ourselves. So we can see here that the large garage door entrance is here, the smaller one here. And then we have some forms here. This will be the garage slab, which will be sloping. Reason why we got to pour it separate. And you can't always pour this all at the same time. I've done that before. And uh, a little more difficult, but uh, your engineer would love that, of course. Another view there. See how nice and straight this is. And I believe our um, form stakes here are four foot on center, something like that. You know, you don't have to locate them where I, I have them. I'm just kind of have them where I would have put them. And uh, if I was building this, again, this is kind of a thought process for you to get inside my mind how I would do something like this. And something else I want to point out is that I have the dirt removed a little farther back. And that's so that, I don't know if I had a view, that's, you can see it's back. The stake is actually on the other side here going down. And uh, so the footing is actually um, going to be about three quarters of an inch past this. But if this is the finished area on the um form or the concrete foundation when it's done you're actually going to go about two and a quarter inches from here to the dirt and the reason for that is just so that i could drive the stakes in you know a lot of times uh, you'll dig this they'll come in they'll dig it all perfectly you know where it needs to be and then you drive the stakes and you're fighting it you're chipping away dirt for each one of these to drive down into the soil so just something to think about when you are digging the foundation um, for the forms. You might want to leave a gap in here. You might not. That'll be up to you. Now let's go ahead and set our rebar. And you can see here where the bars are bent at a 90 degree angle and they have a 20 times the diameter lap. Um, I think I might have a video. I'll put a link in here um, so you can check that video out. That way I don't got to go into any detail on that. And of course, this might require a few more um, rebar pieces in here up a little higher. I just have this down. This will actually be what they refer to as a bond beam going across the garage. Um, they didn't have them a long time ago. And here's how the rebar would kind of go in or how it would be used to tie all of this together. And again, it's bent here. And we have it on the bottom. So these two are on the bottom. This one here is up above. And I don't have any rebar going across. Sometimes you're going to need the rebar 24 inches on center going this way across this slab in both directions or wire mesh. I don't have that in here. Another view of it there. You see where the stakes are down in the ground here up against the soil that has been removed behind the forms. Another view of this angle. We can see here where the rebar is coming in here. There's our anchor bolts. Anchor bolts and rebar for the garage corner. And this, of course, is the side of the garage where the single garage door would be located. And we can see that the anchor bolts are going to need to be a little higher. They need to be above the framing plates. That is definite. So this would be a bond beam basically going across here to uh, um, connect everything together. Now the view of it there, we can see the footing for the stairwell. And then, of course, after we pour it, it would look something like this. Let's strip our forms. And then the uh, garage would look something like this. Our little stem walls here. Another view of it. Another view of it there. And then we will pour the garage slab, which usually slopes about an eighth of an inch per foot. And nice to have some slope in it, of course. Quarter of an, of an inch might be uh, a bit much, but uh, I think that's also acceptable. 
And uh, that is it for the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.